I started my one chunk journey in cannabis. Miserable, dreary, and an exceptionally long grind. That's just my video style. <laughs> From the dark green swamps and the foreboding woods, you can imagine my joy when I got to Varrock, a city of rich castles, a thriving community, newbie nostalgia, and the grand exchange. Except not for me. My experience is cutting tens of thousands of oak longbows, burning thousands of oak logs, and casting Firestrike 10,000 times. We don't do fun here, or anywhere. This is Cannabis Chunk. Last time on Cannafish Chunk, we rolled through the lumber yard and into Varrock. This left us with a number of grinds, including 30 range, 55 magic, 60 fire making, and 72 fletching. If you enjoy this series, please hit like on the video and subscribe to the channel. It really helps it get out to more people. And I have some insane videos on this series coming up that have already been recorded. So, uh, yeah, thank you. I just somehow completely missed getting 70 woodcut in. Uh, there it is. Level 70. 65 fletching at the moment. Well on the way to 66. Uh, I think my prediction is going to be about right. That we're going to end at about 78, 79 potentially woodcut in by the time we're done with the fletching and the fire making. But yeah. Level 66 fletching coming in. As I would cut in doing, yeah, way past 70 now. So, yeah, we're firmly past halfway to level 72. Only six levels to go. Each one of these takes about five hours because it's about 10k XP per hour, 11k XP per hour. So, uh, yeah, these are going to be coming thick and fast for you, but have been long and disparate for I. So, uh, yeah, I hope you're enjoying. And 71 woodcutting. Is that the level for the Crystal Axe? Yes, it is. And uh, we shall never ever ever have one of those because it could not be further away from oops could not be further away from the chunks that we're in if i ever make it over to uh well whatever it's called what's it called pathodermic no see up my brain is now broken completely from uh playing chunk man i've got no idea profidinas profidinas that's what it's called if i ever make it there on this account um i will die a happy man, but uh, yeah, all that to say, 71 would come. And I missed the level because that's just what I do. Level 68 fletching, which is the level for nothing at all. But uh, yeah, four more levels to go. Level 50 hit points coming in. Getting the range up on these men and women has been pretty good so far. So uh, many more range levels to go. Ah, level 750 total. That's, uh, that's a not bad little milestone, is it really? Nice. Level 30 range, which is the level that we need in the chunk. Let's uh, head over to the archery shop and buy the items that we need. So what we need is a maple short bow and an adamant arrow. And once we equip those, that is the range tasks in the chunk completed. And we can move on to whatever's going to be next. If you want free money in this world, uh, don't beg on the streets. Just become a semi-popular RuneScape YouTuber and people will be willing to give. I mean, these days... Uh, Bonds are about 10 mil. So that's like a 30 mil this guy's got. That's like a bandos, pair of Bandos Tassets. That's pretty good. <laughs> Thank you. 35 fire making. Time to rattle through some of these levels now. Uh, they're going to be so quick in comparison to the fletching. Cause the fletching is 25 XP per longbow. And the oak logs are 60 XP to burn. So not only is it significantly less XP to get overall. But also more XP per log. So... We're starting to get to that point in the fire making now where we don't have to do this bit too often because it's really painful when your character stops and bends down. It's just so much nicer when you do this 
you know, this pirouette routine. So I'm excited when we stop doing the bending down at all, but I'll be back with you with 40 soon. And there is level 40 fire making. Really quite enjoying the fire making grind. It's, uh, it's nice to just fly through some levels like it's absolutely nothing. Um, so I'm sure there'll be a few more of these coming up. Level 45 fire making coming in. These really fly past very, very, very quickly. Probably going to go to level 50 maybe and then, and then go back to fletching. And there is level 50. We can now go to winter tard, except obviously it's on completely the other side of the map. So we can't. That's Chunk Man for you. 73 woodcutting, the boaty number. Uh, it's amazing. I, I, I just got 73 woodcutting purely on oak logs, but due to the grinds that I've already done on this series, this really felt like not a lot. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? I didn't even notice. I was AFK so hard that I didn't even notice that I got it. What the fuck? <laughs> I need that on my one pair at a time account. That literal exact pairs if I got it at 1 million XP cutting. Cutting. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Lol. I saw loads of GZs in the chat, was what I first saw, and I scrolled up and it said Canopus Chung, and I was like, what? And it was Beaver? That's so funny, as if I just got a Beaver. At level 73 woodcutting on oak trees. That's so funny. There's this guy in the chat called Maka, right? Who does a um, like ultimate suicide insane uh, chunk man who needs the beaver to roll his next chunk. And he's nine, I think he's about to get 99 woodcutting purely on oak trees without getting it. And I just got it at 73 woodcutting ultimate troll number as well. Oh my god, that's so funny. <laughs> Big level coming in here. Level 70 fletching. You longbows unlocked. I can cut them, but I can't string them, so getting a U-bow is not too useful to me. Only two levels to go until the fletching goal for the chunk is done. Level 72 is the level for the oak shield. And uh, there you can tell the first uh, number of my bank pin, uh, if you're watching carefully. So uh, let's not go in there. And uh, yeah, we're going to get 75 at woodcutting fairly soon, but I probably won't get it on recording. Okay, so we just got 76 woodcut in. I got 71 fletching last night on mobile, so we're only 50k till 72, which is obviously the chunk goal. But, ah, right, so my whole plan this whole time, and stick with me here, is I was going to get these oak longbows, you, and sell them to the shop, right? And if I sell them to the shop slowly, like slow sell them to the shop, it will take about six hours, and I'll get just short of a million GP. If I just go to the shop and sell them like really quickly, it'll be done in two minutes and I'll get about 250k GP. So we're talking about a cost of 750k GP for about six hours of my time and also six hours of some of the most miserable world hopping that has ever happened, right? Um, so we're talking about 120k per hour-ish, 150k per hour. Um, and, but what do I need GP for is, is the main question. So we got some sort of what chunks have we got around us? So barrows would be a lot of positive GP for us um, because we'd get a lot of runes that I could sell, particularly the, the blood runes. I could high alk a lot of the dupes that I get from the barrows chest. So we would net quite a lot of GP from that. We've got this chunk here, which is the sort of construction chunk, which would be a 99 construction grind, I believe. I'm not 100% on that. Um, it would depend if, well, 
the, the main issue with that would be the law rune, so I don't think I'd actually have the orange. But essentially, if we ever unlock that, I'll need the GP to get 99 construction. Likely what that would involve, depending on further unlocking a, a law rune source at a later date, would be getting a, a lot of GP. Like, we're talking 60 million GP. So would my 750k that I'm about to lose out on now really bother me? No, I mean, it's going to be a tiny amount of the GP that we're going to need. Um, so essentially, the, the the question is, is are we going to get a grind anyway that can yield potentially more than 120k GP per hour uh, soon? Um, or a grind that is so long that we're going to net loads and loads of GP anyway? Again, the answer is probably yes, I think. Like... I currently have some of the worst GP money makers like ever. Like there's nothing around me that drops anything of any use. Like if we get here, we unlock Earth Warriors, which is my Slayer task at the moment. And then I could do that. And then I could start rolling Slayer again and we could unlock some better Slayer creatures. Like in this chunk as well, not only is it the construction, but there's the Varrock Sewers, which has Moss Giants and Hill Giants and, you know, a whole bri a whole uh, Obor grind and stuff like that. And we're, you know, five tiles away from it. And all that would just yield so much GP that I think it would be kind of stupid of me to spend kind of between six and eight hours slow selling these longbows so i need the money for the mage but i only need about 160k so i think <laughs> and this is probably going to dramatically upset some of you oh it looks like someone had the same idea with maple longbows so Look, they buy for 32, but you can slow sell them five at a time, which is what I was doing before for 134 GP for five. So, yeah, we're talking just shy of 900k. Or I can uh, go on the shop, set that to 50 for the left click, and then just quick sell them like this. And I think this is probably going to be the way, because that 240k is going to be absolutely massive for me right now not spending eight hours selling it and not rolling any chunks is going to be massive for me generally uh because i think we're going to unlock a better money maker soon than slow selling fucking longbows to a shop right because that is bleak and frankly i don't want to do it so this is probably really 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 upsetting a lot of people right now that i'm doing this at all but i think it's the clever choice because I think it's a cost. It, it's one of those situations where a bit like on a max Iron Man when I was doing that, and a max main is actually your best spending all your money doing like the fastest herbal or training methods possible, and such like that. Because the GP per hour you can net by doing the best PVM is so much higher, and I think the situation is going to be like that here. I think a million GP seems like a lot to me with the chunks that I have at the moment. But in the grand scheme of things, if I could unlock anything that can that can be a decent amount of Alks like uh, like Briar Fighter and like Obor, if I unlock the Varrock Sewer Chunk, that realistically this amount of money just isn't that much. So I think this is probably actually in the long run likely the best the best. In fact, it definitely is because the only chunk where I really need GP is this one. And even that's in the long run because I can't do it yet because I don't have a primary or, or good enough secondary source of law runes to, to get 99 construction. Mm -hmm. So anywhere that is a good enough source of law runes, whether that's crafting them or the Elder Chaos mages might be or I don't know. I don't know what's a good source of law runes, but yeah. Essentially, if I need GP, oh hello, go on, give me a stale baguette, uh, kebab. They're actually all right for me because I can't get any really good food effectively. Um, but this GP here is going to be massive for me in this chunk, but really not that useful for me in the future because we are going to get better money makers than 120k raw GP per hour. Like we we have to, and um, when we do, it would have been a waste for me to spend eight hours doing it. So there we are. 
We sold all our GP. Oh, that, we sold all our longbows. That feels wrong. We're going to get a little bit more of them getting 72. But what I'm going to do now is, is I'm going to buy lots and lots of runes. 800 total level. Can't believe 50 total levels have gone by so quickly. Though I guess that's what happens when you train a skill from level 1 with a decent training method like fire striking. Firebolt there, I imagine we'll be using that quite a lot in the future, but not right now. I mean, if we do barrows, that'll probably be one of the spells that we use quite a lot. Just because it's slightly faster than the fire strike. 35 magic. This has been quicker and more AFK than I thought. Getting some bones bank, just in case we need to get protection prayers at some point, because we're only 22 prayer at the moment. But the werewolves are pretty good, they're quite AFK because they've got 100 hit points as well. And I think these are probably the best things that I can kill, to be honest. I don't think there's much better than this, because these have a chance of dropping that rune med, which is like a free 10k. So uh, yeah, this is not too bad. Oh, go on then. 40 magic. Teleport to house. Elder Chaos Druid robes, which we're pretty close to on the map, I believe. Yeah, just one square away from those. They'd be pretty cool to get, I think. Would, would be better than the uh, Zamorak Monk types that I've got at the minute. But uh, we're flying at the moment. 45 magic on the extreme or one chunk account. That is a teleport to Camelot, which we won't be doing. But, you know, we did unlock the teleport to, Valo blah, blah, teleport to Varrock earlier, which we can do. So uh, look forward to me casting that. That will be so exciting. It feels a bit like the good old days at the moment. Back from uh, episode one, killing the werewolves, they are a lot easier to kill these days with uh, our magic spells. Um, but it's a bit nostalgia being back here. I've accidentally clicked on this fella a couple times and got myself uh, Moonlight Meads. It's oh, it's fills me with all sorts of tingles. But uh, I also just got a lamp and got a hundred Hunter XP for it. I'm hoping to get up to 27 which I think is a baby impling and I think from baby implings I can get a bowstring it might be a young impling actually uh, but one of those fairly low level implings you can get a bowstring from and I can make you short bows at the moment but also there are ents here which drop magic logs so I need to get a seven fletching for that but as part of that if I had the bowstring as well I would be able to get to get level not level, uh, I'd be able to get a magic short bow. So getting a magic short bow would just be game changing for all sorts of stuff because it's a you know actually good weapon. And I can buy arrows from the from the archery shop. So that could be something to look out for. Um, but it really relies on me getting that hunter XP and getting that level one to nine hunter at the museum was a game changer because I just got 100 XP from a lamp which would be the same as 10 lamps at level 1. So getting that 1 to 9 has been really good, and getting 27 or so Hunter, which I think is what it is, is it? Yeah, so it would be that plus 10, and then that plus 10 as well. I think it's it might be young, actually. But either way, 27 or 32 via lamping is a big grind, but infinitely, but a lot, lot, lot smaller for not having to start at level 1 and being able to start at level 10. So, uh Hopefully we'll get more lamps soon. And I haven't finished the outfits yet, actually, like the, the beekeeper one and the camo one. And once I do, that new update will mean that I start getting even more lamps than I do at the minute. Um, I think that update is stupid uh, and you shouldn't just be getting lamps willy-nilly from, uh, from random events. But if that's what they want to do, I will take advantage. Oh, go on then. Go on then. I don't mind if we do... Book of Knowledge, chuck it on hunting. You might get two levels out of this, probably only one, but two would be pretty cool. Ah, nearly two. Look at that, 150 hunter XP. That is huge. 11 hunter. We can now hunt more useless birds that we are nowhere near to catching. That is level 55 magic on the werewolves. High alchemy unlocked. I need to cast it to, be, uh, to get the task. I way overshot and bought 7,000 too many mines and 14,000 too many air runes, but oh well, here we are, 55 magic. Right, so we are now 55 magic, and what we're going to be doing is alking our spare rune med helms. Where are they? In fact, we'll be getting those out. 
And where's our rune meds? Sorry, the, the bank is not looking good. So we've got two spare rune meds, so we may as well just alk those. There is high level alchemy cast, which is a uh, chunk task. 55 magic. We also need to equip our mystic gloves, which we can now do. Let's see what the stats on those are, actually. One second. Let's have a little look. So we were operating with a very minimal plus two and one slash defense, and we now have plus three magic defense and plus three magic attack, which is pretty decent, I would say, at least for when we're going to be casting spells, which hopefully will be a lot, because it's actually uh, way our highest DPS. I mean, we could technically go and buy, like, death runes now and hit 15. So, yeah. But what we're going to do whilst we're in Canifis is we're going to go and chop a hollow tree, because that is a... what are they called? Uh, achievement diary task in the Mauritania region. So I don't know what the hollow trees actually look like. Okay, there's one. Chop down hollow tree. Oh, it's these fellas, these little squat boys. So these require 45 wood cutting to cut, so we couldn't have cut them before going to uh, rolling the bronze axe and starting leveling our wood cutting. Uh, so that is the medium task, and we get bark. Can we make anything out of that? I don't really know. How do you make like the blood bark and swamp bark armor? Hmm. That's an update that's so new that I have no idea what I'm doing. So, uh, yeah, let's get on with it. And uh, I think we're going to be heading back to Varrock now. Oh, I'm going to be casting a teleport to Varrock. How exciting is this? Here we go. So, three of those. Right, equip our fire staff. This is going to be juice. And I think that's a medium Varrock task. There it is. And we're back in Varrock to do some fletching. Oh, my God. I, I can actually teleport somewhere. That is pretty cool. So the big day is upon us, and that means we are about to fletch these two oak longbows to get level 72 fletching, which is the level for U shields. Now, there is a U tree over here, which we're going to chop to get two, no, three logs. What, three, uh, two, uh, God, I'm getting confused there. Uh, Two to make a U shield with, and one that I'm going to burn once I get to 60 fire making. So there is the first two. That was remarkably easy. Um, and this is when it's going to take, you know, 45 seconds to get a third one, because that is how RNG works. Pretty uh, effective little woodcutting grind that we've just had, getting the beaver. That is exciting, to say the least. Uh... Yeah, this really is taking a while. Okay, a further 40 seconds later and we got our third U log. Let's craft that shield. How much XP do we get for this? God, they take a long time, don't they? 150 XP for that. Very cool. That's also probably a best in I mean, that is a best in slot range shield for us. Um, I think there's a bronze crossbow in the shop, so that might be worth looking into. But, uh, yeah. U shield. I don't think I'm going to wear it, will I? I know I can. I thought you. I'd have thought you'd need like forty range for that or something. Nice. So uh, does that give us? That? What's the bonuses on that then? So plus zero range. Oh, none. It doesn't give any attack bonus. What's the point? Weird. Okay. Um. Right. Uh, is it better than the myth kite shield though? That could be not myth kite shield. Myth square shield, which is what we've got. Let's have a little cheeky comparison. So we're looking at. Uh, so a plus 12, plus 9, and no. So it's not better than a, U, than a Myth Shield. What is the point of you? So I got 72 fletching for a useless shield, but that is 72 fletching, and now on to the fire making. So I'm a little bit bored of the fire making, so what I'm going to do now is tick off the remaining, I believe, five tasks that I need to get... Uh, to uh, finish this chunk, so I need 60 fire making, which we're 52 at the moment, and I need to do some things. So buying a newspaper is one of them. That's an easy task in the Varrock area, and then I think I need to browse this woman's store. I think trade. Yep, there's another one. So those are our two easy tasks done. And then I need to ooh, start a couple quests as well. So talk to Romeo. Start Romeo and Juliet. Uh, 
Start Romeo and Juliet. Yes, I have seen her actually. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And let's start the quest. Come on. Yes, start Romeo and Juliet. So, right. That's done, but I can't get to Juliet in the West, so that's fine. And I need to speak to Gypsy Aris as well and start the Demon Slayer quest. And I can only do up to step one on that as well, because I think it's probably going to tell me to go to the library or something like that. It's okay, where is he? I'll kill him for you. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. All right. Cool, go through all the options just in case. I think we're all good, though. Oh. Turns out there's a cutscene. So, yes, it wants me to go to the uh, Sir Prison in the southwest corner of Barrack Castle, but I cannot get there because my chunk ends here. So, yeah, we're, we're kind of stuck on that one as well. So that's that done. Next thing we're going to do is go to the museum and grab the, the kind of kits that you... I mean, oh, can I? Yes, I can do that. So... Okay, right, let's squeeze through here. Uh, so, oh, well done. Sorry, you can't go in here unless you've completed the dig site quest, but I can't complete the dig site quest. Okay, so that's a task that I actually can't do then. So there's a there's a number one dig at a, dig at a uh, training spot thing, uh, dig at the soil. But you need a trowel, which I think... Oh, hang on. Is there a trowel spawn near Varak Centre? That's what, that's what the chunk picker says. It says there's a spawn for a trowel somewhere around here. Uh, I can't see any item spawns on the map except over here. Is that a trowel? Or that? No, that's a pot. What's this one? Leather body. And these ones are two logs. Okay, I'll have to have a look into that and see what that thinks, where, where it thinks that is. So I think what's happening there is that it's picking up that it's an item spawn that I can grab the trowel from uh, the kit over there on the wall, but I can't get in there until I've done the dig site. So that's actually a redundant task and I can't um I can't actually do it. So I'll backlog that, which means we are now done with this chunk except getting 60 fire making and burning a U log. So let's get on with that. Oh, I was about to get this level on mobile, but I thought I may as well record it. Level 55 fire making, just five levels to go until level 60 and completing the Varrock chunk and rolling the next ones. I'll tell you what, this 72 fletching, I don't think I spoke about it at the time, totally underrated grind. I mean, it, I've got nearly 900k XP in fletching now and the XP per hour was about 12k per hour. So, um, you know, I've been in this chunk now for nearly a hundred hours. It really doesn't feel like it because in comparison to the the uh, the Port Phasmatus chunk, it's been quite a diverse range of training and also quite AFK, chopping the oak logs and such. Um, so it's been quite AFK, so it's not felt quite so bad because I've not had to do so much world hopping and this kind of thing. But yeah, totally underrated, nearly, you know, 75-ish hours spent on the fletching alone so yeah it's been it's been a wild ride but we're near okay guys it's a big moment coming in level 60 fire making you can now burn u logs which is the last chunk goal that we needed so what we're going to do is go and grab our u logs out the bank and set fire to them. So uh, let's do that. There we go, 202 XP, U logs burn. Ah, all done. 55 magic, 72 fletching, 65 making, pretty much the main goals. What a chunk that was. We got three, four major skills unlocked with the 77 woodcutting as well. Beaver, first pet on the account, very cool. And uh, yeah. We didn't really get, well, we did, I guess, get quite a lot of good, solid new gear, like the Myth Plate body and the Addy Sword. So, uh, yeah, on to the Chunk Picker, I guess. 
So now that we have completed the Varrock center chunk, this is what we are working with. Quite a lot of uh, cool stuff now. I guess now that I've got access to the rune shop, the barrows would actually be pretty doable, at least in comparison to what it was before. Because um, I wouldn't be needing to be self-reliant on runes. I could just uh, runes, runes. I could just buy as many as possible. Uh, Chaos druids would be pretty cool up here. I think I'd struggle killing them, but if I could, they've got some pretty cool drops. Um, but otherwise, let's get to rolling. Frankenstein's castle. Complete creature Frankenstein up to step eight. That seems like quite a lot. Uh, Wow. Yeah, oh, so I guess that used to be an 80 construction chunk, didn't it? Um, not construction, 80 cooking chunk, because it's got fire, but now that I have 80 cooking anyway, it isn't. Um, so yeah, I guess I'll just crack on and do that. Okay, so here we are. Let's unlock the castle. Do we get, do we get access to experiments from this? Because, what, the graveyard fellas are... Because you go in through the graves, don't you? And the graves are there. So if we get far enough in the quest, I guess we get access to it. So uh, yeah, let's get stuck in and complete as much of this quest as we can. Okay, so I just got the step, go to the grave of the gardener and dig for his head. I'm not entirely sure that I can get a spade. Um, I don't have one in the bank. I'll have to have a little look and see if I can get one. Um, why would it, why might it think, I said the general store or maybe the charter ships, potentially? Um, I don't think there's one in Varrock. So yeah, I think unless the charter ships have one, I don't have one available. We'll see. Ah, okay. So they're not sold at any of the stores, but supposedly there's a spawn for one on the second floor of the Varrock general store. So I guess I have to go and get that, which is a pain in the ass because it couldn't be further away. But uh, we'll be back shortly with a spade. So let's see if the wiki is correct and there is a spade up here. There is. Very cool. What's the other item up here? A knife. Don't need one of those. Very cool. Right, let's carry on with this quest. So it looks like we probably can do experiments because I believe the experiments are underneath uh, this grave here, aren't they? So yeah, kill level 51 experiment. Yeah, so we can, we can do experiments as a training method now, which is interesting because that's actually a very good training method, isn't it? Okay, I'm not entirely sure if I'm going to be able to go up here. Oh, I can. I was expecting that, I was expecting that to be grey. Oh, okay, so it's, this is technically part of a chunk we have, we've had for a long time. Um, but we just get the body parts from here and then take them back to Fenkenstrain. Okay, I think this is the last part in the quest that we can do. Um, he needs a, a needle and five threads. I guess I'll have to go buy those from the store. Okay, we are back with the needle and the thread that we bought from the Canafis shop. Looks like for the next stage we're going to need three bronze wires and a silver bar, none of which we can get at the moment. So that is the end of the creature of Fenkenstrain for us. Um, let's just grab the stuff out of here, just so we've, we can say we've totally maximised this quest. Looks like we get... Yeah, one one broom handle, and I think you get three of these. Uh, three of these. Will it work if I? Okay, yeah, right. So that's what you need the bronze wire and the silver bar for. So we're as far into the creature of Fen Constrain as we can get. Okay, so we have now finished the creature of Fen Constrain up to step eight. Let's uh, let's roll another chunk, I guess. Oh, oh, is that green drag? Yeah, that looks like green dragons to me. Okay, so I need to get a rune weapon and green dragon hide armor. So the green dragon hide armor is obviously just a number of kills. Um, and then I also need to do them until I get a myth kite shield and a rune dagger by the looks of it. And there's a couple tasks as well. So tan some green dehyde, that's easy. 
and kill a green dragon again that's just kind of default as part of doing these other tasks so looks like i'm basically killing dr green dragons till i get a myth kite shield and a rune dagger i don't actually know how rare they are so that could that could be a bit brutal and i also don't exactly know how i'm going to kill them because if we look here there is would you say fair to say no safe spots um by the looks of it so without an anti-dragon shield this could maybe not go brilliantly but we just have to give it a go and, and try and devise a method if it's awkward so uh yeah let's get stuck in okay so fun fact for you green dragons unlike blue dragons which is what most people would use to get 43 prayer or something like that um actually have a magic level so blue dragons are one magic which is why people just fire strike them and hit every single time however green dragons i think have something like 68 magic so you actually don't hit on them very well with with magic at all having said that though I still think it's probably going to be our best method for now just because I can't really melee them for obvious reasons and I'm only 30 range so I can't see a maple shortbow being better. Um, so I'm going to try the magic thing. I also get a longer range with magic um, which will help me um, but the main thing I've got to try and do here is find a safe spot or some kind of jammy way to wedge them in somewhere so that I can kill them from a distance without them walking up to me because if they because I don't have protect from magic to even help with the uh with the fire resistance and I obviously don't have an anti-dragon shield so yeah we could be in a bit of a rough spot here I haven't brought any food with me which is probably an error as well but uh let's go see what we can do Okay, so we are now at the border. Let's unlock the chunk like so. I'm slightly nervous about this because it looks like the green dragons might be really far north. I know, okay, so there's some here. Hopefully I can safe spot over these skeletons. Potentially. I don't really see why not. Ugh. See, this is the problem. Um... Uh, I could see Jagex have specifically made the green drain so they run away from these things. Um, right, let's try this one here. Look how bot infested it is. This is crazy. Um, okay, right. Can I shoot over it? I can. Okay, right. So the safe spotting is actually quite doable. Um, I just need to be careful that I don't get myself killed by walking too close to a green dragon and fire blasting me but look as i said these have such high magic level so they just don't get killed very quickly by fire strike however i don't really need to kill too many because and i've not checked the drop blah, blah, the drop rate yet but i can't imagine the drop rates for the myth kite shield and a rune dagger being particularly high because i feel like when i've done these before on my uh fuck uh, yeah, this could be a problem. Okay, right, fuck it. Ah, don't fire breath me. Okay, right, this could be tricky. <laughs> okay, what to do here? Um, shoot it from this side? Maybe, and start killing this one? Okay, yeah, see, this is going to be a bit of a problem, but hopefully after a bit of time they'll de-aggro from me, and hopefully people will leave me alone and not try and kill me, because that would be annoying um so hopefully we can <laughs> oh i can already tell this is going to be a very annoying grind okay i'm thinking actually i'm going to try and run round over here and safe spot this one from here because there's nothing that can spawn behind me from here so i think i'm just going to focus on this one alone and then i think i'll be in a better spot Oh, I was definitely overestimating how common these would be. The Myth Kite Shield and Rune Dagger are both a 1 in 128. So, yeah, that's going to be... That's, this could be a very, very long grind unless I get lucky. Um, I'm erring more towards trying the range setup, though. I feel like that might be better overall, and I'd get some range levels, which I'm... Oh, I'm going to need anyway, because I need to get 40, 
40 range to equip the green dragon hide fan braces and stuff okay cool so i think I'll, after this trip i'll do some uh i'll do some range okay so there is our first kill and we get dragon bones green dragon hide and a looting bag which is pretty cool so the average kill <laughs> with fire strike takes 168 seconds which is a lot uh, that's nearly three minutes and we've got to do what 128 kills on average so we're talking 360 minutes six hours ish which is really grim um if i use range so a maple short bow with iron arrows we're talking 215 seconds which is obviously worse. However, once we get to 40 range, due to max hit reasons, we're talking 110 seconds. So I think it might benefit me to just go and train some range on some low level NPCs and then move here with the maple short bow once I'm, I'm a bit more ready. Um, yeah, I think that's probably best. Really, really not cool, though. Um, the, those kills take so long. If only these were blue dragons. If only they were blue dragons. Okay, so again, I've done some more research. And actually, if I get to 31 range with the Iron Arrows, my max hit goes up to 5 from 4. And that brings the kill down to 167 seconds. So from 31 range, the kills will be exactly the same as, as the magic speed. So I think that might actually be just better overall. Uh, let's see if we can luck out and get one of the Mythkite Shield or Rune Dagger on the first kill. No, we cannot. We get Adamant Ore, though. Um, we don't have a primary training method for smithing, so that doesn't really matter too much. Um, but interesting to start another another sort of uh, collection in the bank account, because that's what this, these kinds of accounts are all about. Um, What's quite nice about this chunk, actually, and I've only really just realised, is I have the Ectofuntus over here, um, and I've got green dragon bones. Well, not green dragon bones, dragon bones. So if I use those at the Ectofuntus, they're 288 prayer XP each. And if I've got to kill 130 or so on average, that's like 40k prayer XP. And 40k prayer XP is more than enough to get level 43 um well it's not more than enough to get 43 it's more than enough to get into the 40s though um so likely we're gonna have protection prayers after this grind which is very nice so this was the reward from 500 mind runes and a thousand air runes was six kills so i think it'll probably even be cheaper <laughs> to use range than magic uh we got quite a lot of magic xp which i guess is cool although kind of useless to us so yeah, I'm probably going to go and get 31 range so I can hit fours or fives. I can't remember what it was with the iron arrows and then uh, see how we get on. So here we are getting 30, go on, 31 range on the men and women of the Varrock pub. Um, and what we need to do now is bank all this crap, take out iron arrows, which should now hit fives. And then we should be in a bit of a better spot to get some green dragon kills without spending all our money on runes that we're basically just splashing with. And every single level we get, it brings the average kill time down by about five seconds. And then every max hit we get brings the average kill down by about 30 seconds. So as soon as we start hitting sixes instead of fives with these iron arrows, we'll be laughing and we'll be significantly faster than, than the mage technique was. Um, but as we are, this is what we're doing. So because the iron 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 arrows maple short bow actually fires a lot faster than than casting fire strike, I'm gonna bring a thousand arrows with me. So we'll see how many kills we get out of that. They will have cost me three and a half K on average. So yeah, three and a half K in runes would be what, 350 casts? Something like that. Which would be no, not even that. Because it'd be you use three runes and they're about five-ish each, so yeah, less than 300 casts. So if we can get more than six kills out of these 1,000 arrows, then even from a cost perspective, this is going to be a lot better than the runes were. Oh, go on then. 35 range. Getting through it. I don't know how many kills we've done right now, but we're on to our second invent. 
uh, with the range setup. It's definitely a lot better and a lot cheaper. Uh, a thousand arrows gets me, well, I actually left last time with 400 left, so 600 arrows gets me a full invent. So a lot cheaper, will be a lot quicker shortly. We're about break even at the minute in the magic versus range setup. Uh, but we need to get the 40 range anyway, and this really isn't too bad, except when my arrows despawn because the kill takes too long. But hopefully we'll be able to get a myth kite shield or no. Uh, but hopefully we'll be able to get those items relatively quickly. I'd, I'd prefer not to do like 500 green dragon kills, but if that's where we end up, that's where we end up. Uh, we got the Addy Med Helm, uh, Addy Full Helm, which I need to look into. I don't think it will be better than the Rune Med Helm, but it's probably kind of comparable. Um, but yeah, just fighting the green dragons behind this skeleton. Not seen a single PK or anything. I guess they're probably further over this way fighting the bots that have a lot more interesting gear than me. But the grind is going well so far. Whoa, 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 hold up. I, I literally just realised I got a Mithril Axe. That's my best in slot axe because I'm currently using um, a black axe. So that's kind of ideal, isn't it? So if we have to do any more woodcutting for any reason, I've got a slightly better axe to use. That's uh, that's pretty handy. Nice. Okay, so we're up to 44 green dragon kills now and we've got 37 range at the moment. I'm going to hop off the PC now and go do some kills on mobile this evening so I might just be coming back with the Mithril Kite Shield and the... what's the other one? Oh, the Rune Dagger. Um, so if I come back with those and I have both of them then that will kind of suck for the video but will be great for me and if I come back with neither of them that will be good for the video in the long run uh, but terrible for me. <laughs> so uh, yeah, let's see what happens. And here we are with another chunk goal level 40 range. I just nipped inside to the uh, studio to record this one. U-bows, which we can't make. Rune throwing out weapons, which we can't get. Ranger boots, which we really fucking struggle to get. And Robin Hood hat, which is probably borderline impossible. But we do get access to green dragon hide armor. And if you are paying close attention, you'll see in my invent, I have lots of green dragon hide. So, we'll be able to create some and wear it. So, if you recall, you can't create, you can't wear a green D. Oh, yeah, I can hit sixes now. Nice. So, I can hit sixes in this setup, which is huge and will speed the kills up by about 30 seconds. Wouldn't you believe it? But you can't wear a green dragon hide body until you've completed Dragon Slayer, which is bizarre because you can wear a black and red and blue dragon hide body, but not a green one. So we're stuck with our studded body for now, but we will be able to get green dehyde chaps, which are a slight improvement, but more importantly, green dehyde vams, which are going to be a big upgrade over fuck all. So yeah, we're going to go and do that now. Um, you might be thinking you can't craft green dragon hide and you'd be right, but you can craft green dragon leather and I can actually get that in Canifis because there's a tannery there. Who knew? Uh, well, I did because I spent a lot of time in Canifis, but there's a tannery here. You can get needle and thread here. I've got a mad crafting level, so I'm going to go and make myself some green dehyde vams and some green dehyde chaps. Oh, and we're up to 69 green dragon kills. And we did get ourselves a mithril kite shield. So all I'm waiting on now is a rune dagger from the green dragons. Oh, here we go. Right, this is going to be, this is just going to feel very nice. Right, trade. Green, 45 coins each. Fucking hell. Well, that's that done. That's another task for the chunk done. Sorry, I had to sneeze. Um, if I was if I was really good there, that probably won't have looked like anything happened. But if you looked down here, there probably would have been like 10 seconds past. Um, but what we're going to create is a pair of those bad boys and a pair of these bad boys. And we're going to equip them. Let's have a look. Oh, yeah. Look at that. We are gaming now. I mean, what's the difference? So 43 up to... 53 that's pretty nice so uh yeah let's get back to the uh back to the green dragons i'll be honest it also seems kind of safe in the wilderness so i'm gonna go for it 
I'm going to take the big risk and equip my gloves <laughs> and boots for the fashionscape. Look at me now. Wow. Wow. I mean, that's, you know, I mean, it's not quite Missouri, but come on. Look at that. Oh, oh, I'm obviously an idiot. Of course, I can't wear my yellow gloves. I need my new green dehyde van braces for the bonus. That was bonus, not boners. For all of the children watching. And by children watching, I obviously meant adults with a childish mind. God. I mean, I'm, I'm not on the child protection register yet, <laughs> which proves I'm not a pedo. This is going horribly. So I've just logged on this morning and you might be asking yourself, why are you in Port Phasmatis? And the reasoning is because last night we got the Rune Dagger and we also had the Mythkite Shield already. So we have completed the chunk. I've equipped all this stuff already. And uh, I was just doing a little bit, little bit of, uh, of prayer because I don't have 43 prayers worth of dragon bones. But I do have 37, and Protect from Mage is better than nothing. So if we roll, say, the Elder Chaos Druid chunk, we're going to be relying on that Protect from Mage a lot. So I thought I'd just go and get these. Um, but yeah, we've finished the Green Dragon chunk now, and once I've uh, finished with this stuff, we're going to be rolling a new chunk. All right, here we go. 37 prayer. Protect from magic unlocked. Having the Ectophuntus is actually such a boon, man. Like, I'm not going to bother getting any more because I think I've only got 38 prayer banked. But yeah, that's so good to having the Ectophuntus there because I only had 90 dragon bones and it got me from like 22 to 37 magic. Um, so that is definitely going to be something that's going to be useful to me in the long run if ever I need to get higher prayer levels or just have loads of dragon bones for whatever reason. Being able to actually get you know, nearly the most out of them is ideal. I mean, what's the, what's, I think it's 400% and then a wilderness out as 700% and then a gilded out as 350%. So the active hunters really is the second best thing that you can have. So that's been a bit of a blessing, but I will equip these just to show you that I have. And, oh, well, that doesn't matter, does it? And these, so there we go. There are all our chunk goals done. And uh, let's roll a new one. So, definitely a big episode this one. We got some pretty cool items in the Rune Dagger and a Mythkite Shield, best in slots for us. Getting the range levels up and getting the green dragon hides was cool. Protect from Magic Pro is pretty cool. Beaver, what a drop that is. I mean, I really need that on my one pet at a time account, but I guess I'll take it on this one. Definitely got some huge levels as well. It was really nice to... Uh, Get some high levels in woodcutting, fletching, fire making, magic as well, 55, 41 range. I feel like the account's sort of becoming a bit more well-rounded and not just a uh, crafting, cooking, agility merchant. Um, but yeah, I think I'll roll the new chunks in the next video because this one is probably very long already. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll do that. But yeah. Really fun episode this 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 week. It was it was it's been nice. It's been fun. It's been good to get into the wilderness. Good to get into Varrock as well. Train some train some range of magic and uh, yeah. As always though, a big shout out to the channel members: Avery Fields, It Warrior, Eddie Mayer, Shocked Thief, Mitchell Nunley, DJ Focus, Grimsley, El Pinin, Grimzoso, Salnexor, Kai, Hunterman, Fontcest. Carl Sprouse and Crito. Thank you very much for supporting me and helping me out. But yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed. And uh, the start of the next video will be rolling chunks. Hopefully more than one, because I don't want to just roll into something incredibly depressing straight away. Um, but I hope you enjoy whatever's coming next for me. It's not happened for me yet, so I don't even know. Um, but yeah. I hope you enjoyed this one and you enjoy the next one. See you next time. Bye.